Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video I'll show you a breakdown of how this animation was done. My idea for this one was to create a scene with a character but keeping the focus in the action. For 3D I use Cinema 4D but I'm sure that you will be able to translate these tips into Blender or any other 3D softwares that you use. For this project I wanted the camera to zigzag in the opposite direction than the motorcycle to add speed and dynamism to the scene. I don't think it would have worked the same way if I had used a steady cam following the character. For the cars I decided to go for a low poly aesthetics and color them only with black and white, ignoring the lights and shadows in the scene. I also didn't add many details to the models to avoid distractions. I haven't recorded a time lapse of how I created these models, but I'll redo one so you see how I made them. I start with a cube and basically extrude and deform it until I got the shape I want. Once I defined the shape of one car, it was easier to create the other models following the same guidelines. The Vespa motorcycles and the cars are not in scale, which I did on purpose to exaggerate even more the size of the character. The Vespa will be almost in every frame of this shot, so I took a little bit more time modeling it. I used the same techniques as with the cars, starting with the cube and deform it to get the main shapes. Once the Vespa looked like it was done with Legos, I replaced everything inside a subdivision surface and get the rounded shapes. And to shade it, I applied a cell shader to the luminance channel. And I checked the light and luminance so it reacts to the lights in the scene. In this project, I wanted the character to have a 2D cartoon flexibility, but I knew that drawing consistently throughout 200 frames would be a tough task. The way I've solved this was creating only the torso in cinema without extremities, which I will add later on in Photoshop. I'm not the best sculptor, and most likely many will cringe when seeing my process, but I do support the idea of finding your own solution when having a challenge. Now in Photoshop I imported the video and drew the missing parts of my character in video layers. Animating in Photoshop to me is pretty convenient because of how flexible it is and the amount of brushes and techniques I learned throughout time. But being fully honest, sometimes the workflow feels a little bumpy. I do recommend downloading Animdesin. This is a free plugin that makes the workflow way faster with a few simple scripts. I'll leave a link down in the description. Even though this part of the process is time consuming, the results tend to come out unique. The way I broke it down is keeping the black lines, the fill and white lines in different groups in the timeline. If you are interested in seeing more about this technique, let me know and I could go more in depth into how I mix both worlds of 3D and 2D animation. For the moment I'll leave it there and go back to cinema to shade the scene. What I did on the floor is adding irregular stripes to create even more speed on the scene, as if smaller elements like rocks and dirt will be blurred out by the motion of the camera. A noise shader in the luminance channel was the fastest way I could think of and I played with the values of the relative scale, high clip and contrast. For the road I did basically the same, but inverting the colors.
Once the main objects were done, I started dressing the scene. First, with a low value emitter inside a metable, I created a dirt cloud. From Sketch and Tune, I basically used two parameters, outlines and splines, so the cables between the light poles become visible. One thing I did adjust from the sketch material is the thickness to distance. This means that the further away the lines are from the camera or the point of view, the thinner they become. And finally, for the clouds, I used Illustrator. I made four different shapes to spread around the scene. I find Illustrator way more convenient to draw instead of doing it on cinema with splines. Once I get them looking good, I save them as Illustrator version 8, which allows cinema to recognize the shapes as splines. So once all the parts are done, I used After Effects to put everything together, and this is how it looks. I really enjoyed making this kind of breakdown, going through the surface of each step, and let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see some more details about specific parts in future videos. That's all for this one, hope you find this inspiring, and maybe you learned a trick or two. See you on the next one, and bye!